So I am Jean-Pierre Changeux. I am an honorary professor at the Pasteur Institute and at the Collège de France in Paris. And uh, I uh, have been uh, working um, all my life at uh, the Institut Pasteur, uh, starting for uh, my PhD thesis with uh, Jacques Monod, and uh, then uh, still uh, working and uh, having uh, uh, experiments being done and uh, discussion uh, going on. And um, I uh, have been uh, uh, teaching at the Collège de France uh, since uh, 1976 uh, and uh, so it means that uh, I uh, uh, was teaching for 30 years and uh, all um, my work uh, was uh, dedicated to uh, basically molecular biology. I started with uh, uh, the uh, concept of allosteric protein. This was the outcome of my thesis work. Uh, then um, I uh, uh, went to United States to um, the laboratory of David Nartmanson in particular, and uh, I shifted from uh, um, molecular biology of bacteria to uh, the uh, molecular biology of the nervous system and uh, start to work on uh, uh, neurotransmitter receptors. Uh, then um, I came back to the Institut Pasteur and uh, uh, did uh, the early work on uh, the identification of the uh, uh, acidicoline nicotinic receptor, which is the first receptor for neurotransmitter, which was ever isolated. This was in uh, 1970. Uh, then uh, I continued to uh, uh, develop some uh, theories and experimental work on uh, the development of the system, nervous system, and in particular the, uh, the notion of um, uh, selective stabilization of synapses, which was uh, followed up by Jerry um, uh, Edelman uh, as a neural Darwinism. So this was uh, also uh, uh, a very important issue about the relationship between um, the genome and uh, the phenotype of the brain. Uh, I, of course, continued uh, the work on um, the nicotinic receptor. I am still uh, working on it, uh, but uh, uh, we discovered in between that uh, uh, there are <coughs> um, receptors uh, in bacteria which are highly homologous to the uh, nicotinic receptor and therefore uh, we have no access to the uh, X-ray structure and uh, the allosteric uh, transition of, of uh, these receptors. So I started an allosteric transition. I am f finishing, if I may say, <laughs> on uh, an uh, allosteric transition. And uh, last but not least, uh, um, for uh, decades I have been uh, working with uh, Stanislas De Haan, who was uh, uh, a student uh, uh, in my lab and uh, uh, we have developed some uh, modeling of uh, cognitive function and uh, we are uh, uh, still working on that and uh, the most important theory if I may say <coughs> that um, we did uh, was a uh, theory on uh, the global neuronal workspace, uh, which is uh, a theory which attempts to relate the, uh, some particular organization of the brain with access to consciousness. So uh, I am uh, uh, working today uh, from uh, the atomic structure of receptor up to uh, access to consciousness and uh, of course um, uh, all this is done um, in, in the uh, uh, optic of uh, the uh, uh, neurotransmitter receptors uh, being uh, to my opinion some key components of uh, all uh, neural networks so that's where I am and uh, as you can see, it covers a, a large spectrum of, uh, uh, of uh, scientific approaches, but I like that.
first of all, I had a, a chance to to meet Jacques Monod. Uh, uh, I was uh, uh, 19, and um, I uh, had been uh, looking for um, a scientific advisor. Uh, and uh, someday, uh, uh, in which laboratory I could uh, uh, start my thesis. And uh, I had been uh, in, um, uh, first of all, I, uh, I started as a marine biologist, yes, uh, when uh, I was um, a student. Uh, before I entered the Ecole Normale Supérieure in France. And um, I discovered a <coughs> new species of uh, parasitic copepod from Holothurians. So uh, I, uh, uh, I may say I uh, uh, started uh, my scientific life in a, a marine laboratory, and I am still in a marine laboratory. <laughs> so it's... Uh, um, I think uh, it's a good training uh, as a student just to uh, look at the diversity of uh, uh, living uh, species and uh, uh, also uh, I had the opportunity uh, in Arcachon uh, I visited at that time to uh, discover uh, the work of David Nartmanson on the, the electric fish so uh, this was uh, uh, for me a, a good training but uh, I did not want to continue on this uh, subject. I want to <coughs> do some work which was uh, more, uh, more fundamental, if I may say. And uh, I uh, thought about uh, uh, biochemical embryology, the chemistry of embryonic development. And I went to Jean Brachet, who in uh, Brussels, uh, and also I met um, uh, Christian de Duve there, and uh, uh, I came back from uh, this visit with uh, theory. You know, I have always been doing theoretical work, <laughs> and um, uh, this theory was that um, at uh, 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 the stage of uh, activation of uh, the oocyte by the spermatozoan there were uh, some enzyme activation which was taking place and this activation was uh, associated with the burst of uh, lysosomes that the uh, Duve had discovered at the time. So this was the theory. And um, I wanted to test it uh, in Paris but uh, uh, was unable to find a lab uh, where people were interested by that. Uh, one day I uh, met uh, uh, Jacques Monod in, in the corridor uh, of the Institut de Biologie Physico Chimique. He was uh, going to uh, make a visit to the head of the department uh, to become a professor at uh, the Sorbonne, the University of Paris. And um, then I asked him, well, can you help me with uh, uh, the enzyme assays that I have to do? Uh, to demonstrate uh, my theory about uh, the activation of the egg by the spermatozoan. Uh, I was using sea urchins, actually. And um, uh, the uh, answer was, uh, uh, just give a seminar in uh, uh, my laboratory at the Pasteur Institute. So I gave uh, a seminar uh, in uh, Jacques Monod uh, laboratory on uh, my project on the fertilization of sea urchin eggs. And Jacques Monod said, well, uh, it's a very interesting topic, but nobody is working on this in France, and you have to drop it. And uh, I can offer you to uh, uh, start a thesis in, um, in my laboratory, uh, but you have uh, to work on bacteria. And uh, <coughs> may say, um, I did not uh, like bacteria at all, smelling very bad, uh, without any kind of uh, shape, you know, or color or whatever. Uh, so I hesitated for three months. And after three months, I said, yes, I come. <laughs> so this is uh, 
the way I entered in Jacques Monod, uh, I uh, uh, had to start uh, uh, my training because Jacques Monod realized that I had no training in uh, biochemistry. I had the training in, uh, in zoology, in uh, ecology, even if uh, we use the, the, may I use the term. And so I spent uh, three months under his uh, direction uh, to do some, um, uh, I would say, standard experiments, but extremely useful for me because it was a, an exceptional training in, uh, in um, biochemistry, enzymology, uh, uh, bacterial genetics. Um, François Jacob had uh, introduced uh, <coughs> the uh, lactose operon into uh, salmonella. And uh, because salmonella is lack negative, uh, <coughs> the question I had to solve is uh, whether or not the lac operon become expressed in salmonella the same way as it is in Escherichia coli. So this was the first kind of uh, genetic engineering experiment. And uh, so I had to learn how to assay uh, beta galactosidase, how to assay permease, uh, how to uh, um, make mutants uh, and uh, so forth. So in, in three months, I had a, a course, a direct course from Jacques Monod. And he was coming every day to see me. So that was, uh, I think, the most uh, important moment I missed in my life and most enthusiastic moment because he was an extraordinary master. So that was my... Uh, introduction to biochemistry, if I may say, and uh, molecular genetics. And then came the, the time of uh, uh, starting of uh, PhD, find uh, um, the uh, theme of my PhD. And uh, uh, Jacques Monod was working uh, very closely with uh, François Jacob. And uh, they proposed me some themes on um, uh, the operon, because it was not yet published. It was going to be published. Uh, uh, this was in uh, 1959. Uh, so I did not like to work on things that they were working on. I wanted to have something for myself. <laughs> so, and uh, I said, well, I don't, uh, I think, uh, you are doing it, so why should I do it? You know, it's, uh, and uh, uh, then uh, François Jacob mentioned, among many other things, um, the um, finding by uh, Edwin Umberger that in bacteria there are regulatory enzymes uh, which uh, are sensitive to uh, uh, the end product of the biochemical pathway, they are the first enzyme. So there is a feedback inhibition on this enzyme. So uh, he discovered that, and, uh, uh, and um, um, Pardier also on an other enzyme. Uh, so they said, well, this is uh, some observation which was made. Uh, and I immediately jumped on, on this topic because you know, it reminds me of the first theory I had about uh, the fertilization uh, and the, uh, the burst of enzyme activity. So there was some kind of enzyme regulation, which was not the one that Jacob and Mono were uh, presently studying, which is the regulation of what in biosynthesis. So this was uh, another kind of regulation at the level of the enzyme activity itself. So this was the beginning of uh, my work to try to understand in biochemical terms um, how um, uh, regulatory signal control the activity of uh, an enzyme. And this is, uh, of course, an interesting biochemical problem because the substrate was threonin and uh, in the case of threonin daminase and the end product was isolacin and they were not uh, close Analogs, they were structurally different. They were amino acids, okay, but different. And the issue was how do they interact? Do they interact at the same site or do they interact at uh, different sites? 
and uh, uh, this uh, uh, was the beginning of, uh, of the theory of uh, allosphere interactions because um, I found that one can dissociate the catalytic activity and the feedback regulation uh, by isolacine. So we have, uh, uh, we, I found a method to, to keep the enzyme active, uh, which was no longer regulated by the feedback inhibitors. And uh, there were also other observations on cooperativity, which was also last uh, during this uh, uncoupling. Uh, and uh, uh, at that time, Jacques Modo said, oh, you have interesting results. You should uh, present them at a Cold Spring Harbor meeting. Uh, this was in 1961. And uh, I wrote uh, a paper on uh, this finding and also on the on uh, the theory, as you know, I have always been theory, uh, where I, I suggested, I think for the first time, uh, that the uh, catalytic site and the regulatory site were uh, uh, separate from each other, and that there was an indirect interaction between the two sites. And uh, so this is uh, the paper I presented for, uh, at Cold Spring Arbor meeting. And Jack Mono said, well, you have done the work, you should sign it by yourself. So I signed the work by myself. And uh, then in the uh, conclusion of uh, uh, the Cold Spring Arbor uh, meeting, uh, Mono became aware also of uh, work uh, done in parallel by um, Arthur Pardy and uh, John Gerhardt. And um, uh, then um, said from, um, my observation and those of, uh, of uh, Jean Gerhardt, uh, that there was uh, some kind of uh, common uh, uh, features between uh, these two systems, at least. And uh, then, in the written conclusion, uh, they designed a word, which I did not do in my early work, but that uh, they qualify the, the model uh, I had proposed with two sites. Uh, they used the word allosteric for the first time. So this was the birth date of the work allosteric. Then I continued my uh, thesis work and uh, uh, Jacques Monod became more and more interested because uh, in 61 he was really concerned by uh, the Operon and then he became interested in my work which uh, I did, uh, I was completely isolated in the life. The only one, that's what I wanted, you know. <laughs> so, I had not to complain. And um, uh, then uh, the uh, exchange between uh, Jacques Monod and myself uh, became more and more uh, um, interesting, I think, and constructive. And uh, uh, I needed to, f to finish my uh, thesis work by a, some kind of model at the end. And um, uh, so um, we had a very uh, interesting debate between us and also with uh, uh, Jeffrey Weiman, who had been working with uh, hemoglobin and also with, uh, we had exchange with uh, Max Perutz, uh, Jacques Monod himself, but uh, also myself directly when he visited us in Paris. And um, this uh, debate uh, ended by a theory that uh, was uh, mono weiman changeux which is the 1965 model, which is uh, um, now uh, uh, not only being quoted, uh, because I think there are more than 6,000 um, uh, quotations, uh, but uh, also the, the number of citations since 1990 is increasing. So per year there are more citations now than there were uh, at the time the uh, paper was published. So it's uh, some kind of theory which has been, uh, I can say, quite successful. So this is, uh, if you wish, uh, the end of uh, uh, my uh, uh, exchange with uh, Jacques Monod uh, and uh, I may say that the, the, 
the relationship uh, I had with him were uh, really extraordinary. It was a very, very important time in my life. But I wanted also to be independent. And um, at the end of uh, my thesis work, I proposed the idea that perhaps what I had been doing with the bacterial enzyme could also work in, uh, in the nervous system and that perhaps uh, in synaptic transmission uh, there would be some mechanism of the allosteric type I had been working with uh, initially in the laboratory of Jacques Monod. So uh, that's what I have uh, uh, try to demonstrate and I am still working on it uh, since that time <laughs> so, <laughs> and it happened to be right so it's okay so the the the, the whole uh, the whole uh, work I did uh, was uh, for me a very very fascinating moment and um, I may say that um, uh, after that, uh, the relationship with Jacques Monod uh, have always been very, uh, very good, and uh, he was extremely supportive uh, of uh, uh, the work I, I did later on. And for instance, uh, the paper on the isolation of the nicotinic receptor, the first, as I said, the first uh, uh, evidence for the uh, identification of the receptor in vitro uh, was published as a PNAS paper uh, which was communicated by uh, Jacques Monod who was member of the National Academy of Science and uh, the, uh, also the key paper on, uh, <coughs> on the synapse selection was also uh, communicated by, uh, by Jacques Monod to the PNAS so he was uh, always um, uh, very, uh, uh, I think, uh, uh, extremely generous and uh, very supportive. Unfortunately, he died too early. <laughs>